The film, The Green Book, is up for five Oscars, including Best Picture. It's the story of a black musician and his white bodyguard traveling the Jim Crow South in the 1960s. They used The Green Book to navigate. It cataloged where a black person was and was not welcome to stop to eat or to sleep. Green Book, of course, is very real. And as Denise Koch reports, Baltimore was among the cities where it was useful. Cab Calloway, he played there, so did Duke Ellington, Nat King Cole, and the biggest names in jazz and blues. The Royal Theater was just one of the theaters on Pennsylvania Avenue that welcomed the very top black talent. Welcomed at the theater, but not at all hotels. Not white hotels. In the heyday, just two blocks down from Pennsylvania Avenue, if you were a black musician and you came to Baltimore, you knew the first place you checked in, right here on Dolphin Street, the Black Musicians Hall. There, you'd be directed to a black rooming house, hotel, or church and told where you were welcome and where you were not. And that would have been in the Green Book? That would have been musicians. in the Green Book where, where you could go to eat, where you could go to, you know, get gas. I mean, what bathrooms, all of that. Margaret Locklear grew up on Pennsylvania Avenue right next door to the once glorious Wonderland Bar. I came from the migration from the South in the 50s, and we were given this book to let us know where we could stop because it wasn't safe below the Mason-Dixon line to be caught out in the open. The first edition of what was then called the Negro Motorist Green Book was published in 1936, and for 30 years it was the guide for black travelers as they drove this country, this state, and this city. It was necessary for our safety and for our mental well-being. So. <laughs> For musicians who spent their lives on the road, the Green Book was a means to survival. In Baltimore, they would find listed the few black hotels where they could stay, including the Madison, the York, the YW, and YMCA, the bars where they could work or play, such as the Wonderland or the Sphinx. Candace Taylor is writing a book about the Green Book. In a new Smithsonian documentary, she says, There were all kinds of businesses listed, just what you would find in a AAA guide, but also very telling in terms of how many areas of black people people were shut out of. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed, and three years later, publication ceased. Today, there is no Green Book. No, you don't need it. We already know it's ingrained, it's inherent, it's in us. We even teach our children what not to do, what not to say. It's here. You don't need the book. Margaret has lived her whole life in Baltimore through many chapters of racial tension and conflict. And sadly, she believes the black community has internalized the rules for survival once dictated by the Green Book. The Green Book Guide to Freedom, the film, premieres Monday, February 25th at 8 on the Smithsonian Channel. Now back to you.